Hi friends, it's Maria. Welcome to Motivation Monday. I hope you are well and taking good care of yourself today. In today's Motivation Monday, I wanted to talk about emotional eating. So many people are um, struggling with this problem um, as a result of the chaos that's going on in the world, the uncertainty that's going on, or maybe even um, this has been an ongoing struggle and problem for you even before all that has been happening. So I thought that I would um, address one of the um, core reasons why many people turn to food to avoid their emotions or to stuff down their feelings or emotionally eat. Um, there are three essential practices that can really enable you to put a stop to emotional eating. And I have an amazing free ebook that goes into depth about those practices. But for today's um, video, I wanted to address one of the biggest factors that affects um, emotional eating, and that is stress. Stress is a physiological response to a perceived threat, and oftentimes we, um, you know, we we are triggered and we feel worried and fearful and overwhelmed with circumstances in our life. We can also have a very stressful lifestyle. Maybe we are, um, you know, very busy with work or maybe we're homeschooling our children right now and that's feeling stressful. A lot of learning curves for many of us. So there's outer stress, the circumstances of our life, and then there's inner stress, the way we feel about things, the way we react to things. Or even if we have a lot of negative self-talk going on, that can create a lot of stress in the body. So addressing the stress and finding healthy ways to release stress will make a big difference and help you to start to be more relaxed around food because emotional eating and stress eating go hand in hand. When we are stressed and triggered, we want to calm down and food will in the moment help us to calm down. However, in the bigger picture, of course, it creates more problems, right? It creates overweight, it creates inflammation, it cr creates all of these negative feelings that we have if we've had a binge or we're emotionally eating. So the stress response is uh, something that happens in the moment. Sometimes we are aware of it and sometimes you know, something that's stressing us out or sometimes it's an ongoing thing that we're sort of living with. Some of us don't even realize how stressed we are and then so, so little something little happens. Maybe somebody cuts us off or the computer breaks down and we freak out. It means that we've sort of been at our edge and the, the you know, the, it was sort of the um, the last piece that made us go over the edge and reactive. So one of the proven methods that decreases stress is something called emotional freedom techniques, tapping. And if you um, watch my videos and you know me, you know that this is one of my go-to techniques because it's been so effective in reducing the stress response, reducing the cortisol and the other hormones that get triggered when we're in a stress response. And so some of you may be using emotional freedom techniques, also known as tapping, and some of you may be new to the practice. But what I would like to do is in today's live is to offer you a sequence in, in applying EFT and help you to start to de-stress your system. This practice, like I said before, it has been um, proven to show that it reduces the stress response, it reduces the cortisol in the body, in the brain, and it helps you to be more relaxed. 
So if you would like to follow along, I see Liz is with me. Wonderful Liz, it's so good to see you here. I'm gonna do a little tapping sequence to help with the stress response. So the one thing about emotional freedom techniques is that we first identify the problem that we're experiencing. And the problem could just be stress. Or maybe you know that there's something else stressing you out. Maybe you feel stressed about your job, or maybe you feel stressed about having to homeschool your child, or maybe you feel stressed that maybe you had an argument with um, your significant other. Whatever you're feeling stressed about, the first step is to identify the stress. And you can even measure it on a scale of zero to 10. How stressed do you feel? If you're feeling like a 10, you're feeling really stressed. If you're feeling like a five, it could be somewhere in the middle. And if you're feeling like a zero or a one or a two, you're not really stressed about that. So if you are in a safe and comfortable place, I'm gonna encourage you to follow along with me and take a few moments to de-stress yourself. Tune into the problem, tune into what is stressing you out or maybe this just this feeling in your body that you're stressed. Measure it, zero to 10, and then tune into um, your body and notice if you can feel it in your body. You may or may not, don't worry if you can't, but you might be feeling the stress in your chest or in your stomach. Notice where it is. So with EFT, we start on the side of the hand and you can begin tapping on the side of the hand. Take a deep breath in and let it go. And then we do something called a setup statement where we identify the problem and we then add an affirmation of acceptance. So it goes like this, even though I have this stress in my body, I deeply and completely accept myself. And you do the setup statement three times. Even though I'm feeling really stressed in my body, and you might add what you're feeling stressed about, the more specific you can be, the more effective this can be. Even though I have this stress in my body, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I'm feeling really stressed, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And if you're having difficulty with that acceptance piece, you could say, wouldn't it be nice if I can be more accepting of myself? Or I'd like to be more accepting of myself. And if you keep tapping, you will get to that place of being more accepting. Acceptance is an important aspect of making any kind of change in our body, in our mind, in our life. So tuning into the problem and then a, a statement of acceptance. And take a deep breath in and let it go. And now we go through the tapping points with the reminder phrase. So the reminder phrase is just tuning into the problem. So the first point is on the eyebrow. And you can tune into specifically what it is that's stressing you out. Call it to mind. Think about it, and as you're tapping, you can say, this stress in my body. Take a deep breath in and let it go. The next point is the side of the eye. Breathing in and letting go. All of this stress, when I think about this problem, underneath the eye, Take a deep breath in and let it go. This stress that I'm feeling when I think about this problem, top of the lip, bring your awareness to the stress. This is important because when you tune into the stressor, it creates the reactive behavior. And as you're tapping, you're telling your body to calm down. So you're releasing the stress response in the moment. You're rewiring the brain, actually. Crease of the chin, take a deep breath in and let it go. All of this stress, when I think about this situation, 
Breathing in and letting go, collarbone, all of this stress. Breathing in and letting go, top of the head. Even though I'm feeling stressed about this situation, I choose to accept myself with love and compassion on the eyebrow. Even though I'm feeling stressed about this situation, I choose to relax and let it go. The side of the eye, take a deep breath in and let it go. Even though I'm feeling stressed, I choose to take a deep breath and let it go. Underneath the eye, breathing in and letting go. Even though this situation makes me feel stressed. I choose to take a deep breath and let it go. Top of the lip, ease and flow, release and let go. Crease of the chin, breathing in and letting go, and the collarbone. Another breath in and let it go. You can move your body, your shoulders, your head. The objective is to get the energy flowing. So breathing in and letting go. Underneath the arm. All of this stress in my body. Top of the head, it's safe to let it go. On the eyebrow, I choose to let it go. Breathing in and letting go. Ease and flow. Release and let go. Underneath the eye. Breathing in and letting go. Top of the lip. Crease of the chin. Ease and flow. Release and let go. And the collarbone. Breathing in and letting go underneath the arm. All of this stress, it's safe to let it go. Top, top of the head, breathing in and letting go. Release your hands, you can shake out your arms, wiggle your body, you can drink some water. Drinking water is great with this process. And then check in with yourself and notice. Notice the number that you gave your stress before. Maybe it came down. It's likely that it came down. Maybe it also, as you were tapping, you had other awareness of maybe some deeper stressors that were being triggered in the moment. Because sometimes when we're just stressed and reactive, we're not always aware of the deeper driver that is driving the stress. So the wonderful thing about tapping is that it relaxes the brain, it relaxes the body. And when you're not in the stress response or as you, the brain, you start to, so the blood flows more fully to the brain and you can think clearly and you get the cognitive awareness that, oh, I thought I was stressed about this, but I was really stressed about that. Okay, because sometimes we feel like in the moment we're reactive, but maybe the argument I had yesterday with my partner is really, feel, I'm feeling stressed about that and I've just sort of avoided it. So if that was effective, I would love to hear your thoughts. If you still feeling stressed, you can go ahead and continue tapping until you neutralize the stress until you have released your zero or a one, you can keep tapping to tune into how you want to feel. Ease and flow, release and let go, and feel more relaxed and at peace. If you use tapping to help you with stress, you can do this a couple of times a day and it will start to relax your brain, relax your body. A lot of us are in a easily we're in the habit of a stress response so you can start to train your brain to be more into a relaxation response by tapping a couple of times a day and as you do that 
it will help you to be more intentional, which means that if we're talking about emotional eating, when you're more intentional, you'll think twice about grabbing food. You'll think twice about stuffing down your emotions. So monitoring your stress, applying a technique like EFT, there's of course other ways to de-stress your system that are important and essential so that you can feel more at ease and more at peace and more intentional when it comes to any area of your life, particularly if you're struggling with emotional eating. So monitoring your stress is one of the most important things you can do. The other thing that you can do is to not go on deprivation dieting. So we're talking about emotional eating and the three essential practices that will help you to stop emotionally eating. Monitoring your stress is one of them. No, no deprivation dieting. As a matter of fact, eating a nourishing breakfast is probably one of the most important fact, factors that you can do. And in nourishing your body and diminishing the stress because when you are under eating or you're skipping meals or you're not giving yourself a healthy breakfast you're actually putting your body in a stress response right there and so that creates the cortisol that creates all the hormones that make you reactive so eating nourishing foods putting in the good stuff is really important to not only create a balance in your eating, in your physiology, but it will help to monitor and help you to be less stressed out. Because actually deprivation dieting is one of the single most factors in why many women binge and overeat. So balancing your diet, putting in the good stuff, you can still release excess weight if you want to release excess weight, but it will give you a more balanced approach to doing that. And then, of course, the third factor in emotional eating is making friends with your emotions. Some of us have developed ways of cultivated ways to avoid our uncomfortable emotions. And you want to start to make friends with your emotions. Your emotions are only energy and energy wants to flow. And if you can start to be non-judgmental about your emotions, you can start to be more accepting and curious about your emotions. Then you can allow your emotions to flow because when we suppress our emotions, they show up somewhere or we become depressed. And, and a lot of times women that struggle with emotional eating will turn to food to stuff down the emotions. However, it doesn't make those uncomfortable emotions go away. They're just there, pushed down deeper. So the opportunity is to start to hold space for yourself and to start to give voice to your emotions. You don't have to act on your emotions. You can just give voice to your emotions and allow them. Sometimes just giving voice to them will help them to diffuse and to be released. So tapping is a great tool for doing that as well. It'll help you to process to release uncomfortable emotions. So I will do another video on um, dealing with the emotional body and tapping. But for today's purposes, I would encourage you to just start tapping to de-stress your system. And that's going to give you a great handle on stopping emotional eating. If you have not done so already, you want to get yourself a copy of my free ebook, Three Essential Practices to Overcome Emotional Eating. It is wonderful. It's chock full of lots of um, great information that will really help you to put a stop to emotional eating. It also has links to videos where I guide you through some tapping sequences and that will support you as well. So I am so happy that some of you actually have joined me. I see that um, Tivoli and Jessica, and I know that um, 
I saw somebody else joined before. I'm on my phone and I can't see everybody, but thank you so much for joining me in today's live. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this. If you did the tapping with me or if you have any other questions or thoughts about this topic, I will put the link to my ebook if you don't have it already. And um, yeah, I hope that you will have a wonderful day today and coming from a more centered place, be empowered to treat yourself and your body with love and respect. So um, tapping will certainly help you to get a handle on emotional eating if you are struggling with that. Thank you for joining me today. Have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye now.